submitted for your approval. A fan based show who encompasses the multi twine multiverse of superheroes, villains, sci fi, fantasy, horror, and action comedy. All whose genesis stems from the printed page of the comic book. At the logo streaming towards your head, you've just entered into comics, cons, and beyond. Welcome back, comic book fans, to Comics, Cons, and Beyond. 2017, Happy New Year. Hope you folks had an incredible holiday. I know we did. We took a little bit of a siesta, but now we're back, and so are you. So let's get started. With me, as usual, I have... Bob. Adam. And we start off with comic book to screen shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Now, 2017 has started off kind of rocky, kind of sad. Mm. And that is because we lost somebody that is near and dear to us. All, uh, of, us. all yeah. of us. Every every fanboy and fangirl out there, I think you know, Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia, very tragically passed away at the beginning of this year. Uh, and, you know, we don't think anybody else could ever fill the role of Princess Leia as Carrie Fisher has, and uh, she will be sadly and deeply missed, and unfortunately, her mother as well, uh, Debbie Reynolds, a very classy, elegant lady, wonderful actress. Talk about just a doubleheader of, of tragedy to start off 2017, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely sad loss for fans everywhere. Yeah, and I mean, this definitely means a, a little bit of a change-up for the, the franchise in general. Um, I mean, obviously, we know that there are two movies after The, the Force Awakens that they, they plan on shooting. And as far as um, I think what's going around right now is that she is completely in the next movie. but um, Well, she wrapped up filming yeah. just prior to her passing, yeah. But uh, I, I think the intention was that she was going to be in all three. So I guess we're going to see what the fallout is for that, what kind of turnaround they're going to have. Obviously, we know that they can do stuff with special effects we've seen in The Force Awakens, but does oh, that yeah. mean that that's the path that they're going to go down? Does that mean that they're, they're still going to bring her in or maybe some honorable mentions or maybe they're just going to kill her off after the, the second movie? We'll see. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be interesting to see them bring her back to life, CGI, but I, I don't know, as a fan... Maybe too way soon. too soon. Yeah. Way too That's soon, and I, I think that would be a dishonor to her memory. Mm. You know, interesting side note, just weird little factoid. You know her daughter was in, uh, what's she called? Force Awakens, right? She was in the command room. She was one of the blonde hair and the buns. Oh, yeah. was that her? That was her. The, the, the same girl who has the earmuffs in Scream Queens. Yeah. <laughs> Which we, me and my girlfriend actually wound up watching. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Actually, you know what? That, actually, that's, that's a very entertaining it series. Is. It really is. Mm -hmm. So uh, got to give props to the folks who created that or the same folks behind Glee and American Horror Story, of all things. So, Weird uh, skill set. Yeah. Mm. Very much. Very diverse. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. They're on a roll, and I hope they still create more... Yeah, fun our, type of uh, quirkiness. Our hearts definitely go out to to her her daughter as yes. well as you know the what that means for everything that she does moving on in the future. I mean, she's an inspiration for all of us. So. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, up further in comic book to screen shenanigans, obviously, we have a brand new year ahead of us, and we have coming very very soon. We have Aliens, the new Alien movie, mm -hmm. The Covenant. Michael Fassbender is coming back as the android, and we also have the new Power Rangers movie, which, from the trailer, looks good. I mean, I like it. It it still has a little bit of that you know, uh, teenage you know, high school humor, but angst. it's angst, but it's darker. <laughs> it's yeah, darker and fun. not as corny. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the direction that they're taking uh, with that. I. I think I mentioned this before. It looks kind of like a like a Breakfast Club meets uh, <laughs> a little bit. You know, obviously they're all in detention together, yeah. after uh, school program. Kinda. Troubled youth. So dare you save the world? I know, right? It's, and they do the little dance on the uh, top level of the window seal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
we'll oh, definitely yeah. see you. And, and I mean, obviously, the Alien Covenant with uh, we'll with me has a special place in my heart. I mean, mm. Aliens is probably one of the main things that keep me in comic books. <laughs> I've read the novels for them, and as you could wind up look, reading over to uh, the comic books as well. They kind of flip flop back and forth, shorten up the comic books at least. But you know, obviously, we know that Danny McBride's going to be in this one, which is a little bit interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think I saw for a while that James Franco was in a bit in it, but I don't know if that's still holding true. And then I'm kind of interested to see if they're going to. Uh, because I saw Naomi Rapace is going to be in it as well. Mm -hmm. So if she's going to wind up playing maybe just an introductory role or maybe just kind of like a um, little bit of a resolution role in the, in the film. Uh, I loved her in the last one. It did get its critiques, Prometheus. It was a little bit confusing during certain parts, but I yeah. think that's just because Ridley Scott generally, uh, when it comes to writing, feels like he's kind of compacting a story a little mm -hmm. bit. So, I mean... Hopefully this one kind of brings up a little bit more resolution. There aren't those untied things, but from what we've seen, and obviously we know Blade Runner's coming out as well. Oh, yes, His hands that's right. might yes. be full on this. So. Thankfully not a sequel. I'm sorry, thankfully not a remake. It's a sequel. It's something I'm okay with about the Blade yeah. Runner. If they're going to try and make a remake and then just well, have it go completely off a tangent, the fact that it's a sequel, I appreciate that. But it's not, though. I mean, Har Harrison Ford old man. is an old man, so it is It is a sequel. I mean, God, mm. if they tried to remake it, I, I don't know how successful or popular that would be. Well, but a sequel I'm comfortable with. Yes, definitely. I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen Ryan Gosling in, in too much recently. I mean, obviously mm. he's still. No, in, yeah, in he's stuff. still active. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. But it's it's nice to see him in something that's gonna clearly be in the spotlight for a lot of fans and in the comic book genre as well as the kind of artiste. Oh yeah. Well, I think he's come to a point because he's had such an incredible career and he's he's definitely a phenomenal actor, mm. where he can pick and choose his roles and yeah. not not just go okay i'll take that oh okay i'll take that because he's in a position where he doesn't have to he's almost at that samuel L. jackson point you can do whatever the hell you want <laughs> yeah the goal i think of any actor you can just pick yeah. and choose it doesn't matter just walks on a set like i wasn't in this movie but i am now yeah boom and what's in your wallet yeah, yeah. there you go um, interesting, uh, yes. a little bit of interesting things as well is that Peter Dinklage is uh, rumored to be in the Infinity Wars for uh, Marvel's events for Thanos, as well mm. as obviously the Avengers kind of drawing in Guardians of the Galaxy and all that stuff. So we'll see what kind of role he plays in that. So um, I'm trying to think, like, what role could he possibly play? Maybe they'll just, they won't go with the character. <laughs> Whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be good. Well, yeah, well at least good. he won't play an angry elf. Well, I mean, that has yet to be seen. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> no, actually, that was funny. You know, say Elf one more time. You feel? Come on. That was that was just, I love that one. He runs across the table yeah. and tackles him. Peter Dinklage, actually one hell of an actor. Absolutely. Man. I love him. I really do. Incredibly respectable. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Woody Harrelson's going to be in uh, ah. the new um, Han Solo movie. Yeah, I guess I'm mentor Solo. of Han Solo or something. Well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm obviously we're here for speculation, but yeah. I... I'm kind of. That's one of those movies where I'm kind of excited for it, but I'm also kind of. Uh, we'll see if it does yeah. Harrison Ford any justice, because mm -hmm. obviously we know he's going to be younger, so it's yeah. not not going to be him. Mm -hmm. We'll see who they get to play the actor. Um, if if it's if it's going to be for me like Rogue One was to Force Awakens, where I feel like that was better, and Force Awakens was just kind of meh. I loved yeah. Rogue One so yeah. much. Rogue One was definitely awesome for sure. No, it was, and I mean they know that. Han Solo is one of the most endearing characters of Star Wars, one of the most popular ones. There is no way they can screw that up. I mean, they can, <laughs> Very but, but the the uh. the fallout from doing so will be horrible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, as far as I think, as Star Wars fans go, it's it's not going to do any harm to him as a character from you know. Uh, the mm -hmm. first original three to The Force Awakens. I don't yeah. think it's going to do any damage to him there because um, I think that if anybody walks away, it'll be like, uh, you know, Anakin Skywalker. They'll be like, yeah, I love Darth Vader, but yeah, is, was Anakin really my thing, my, my cut and cheese? Yeah. Or? Well, God forbid the, the, the writing and directing team who suffered the repercussions of the fan base for screwing it up. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. th it definitely opens up a, a lot of things. Obviously, we know... Um, not canon right now, but earlier mm -hmm. they, they spoke about how Boba Fett, for example, was uh, played some roles with Han Solo beforehand. Obviously, we know that. Um, yeah. So we'll see if we get to actually bring that love of our character of Star Wars back into the forefront. And if so, there's also some rumors, obviously incredibly under the surface, as it always is, you know, like Half-Life, you know, 3, for example. Whether or not... Uh, 
Boba Fett's actually going to get his own movie. So yeah. I think they'll kind of use this if they actually do incorporate him in the movie to see if they can get enough steam running to go with Boba Fett. But let's be honest, anybody yes. in a suit in Star Wars generally does pretty well if you just take a look at Darth Vader. So yeah, yeah but let's not forget how horrible Kylo Ren, and he had a suit and a mask. Yeah, he was a little whiny boy. But he also took off his mask too. Yeah, yeah. So. way too damn soon. Who the hell does that in the first movie? We'll see. I honestly, I think it's it's because I don't think he's going to be a bad person. We obviously know that General Snoke is going to be uh, in it still. Mm. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of where the true villainy is going to lie. Whether they go actual original Star Wars with it, where like Kylo Ren kills him in the end, I don't know. <laughs> but I I kind of feel that because he was kind of whiny, it, it opens up that that venue for okay, I realize that what I did was wrong, and I can turn into a hero. And I think that that's kind of what Disney's about. So we'll see. You know the redeeming story. That could be an interesting arc. I, I must mm. agree. I just I worry about the idea now because after Anakin, the idea of how a Jedi becomes a Sith is through just like uh, what's I'm looking for being a whiny brat. Yeah, exactly. But don't be wrong. Like I actually like Kylo Ren because I I can't understand the idea of being a Sith in general. I'm saying don't be wrong. Like, I would take power and all disobey me. They would suffer my wrath. But normal human beings like. They would have to have some severe emotional trauma. Like, your uncle is the guy who saved the entire Republic, and you're like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go emo on you. <laughs> you know, kind of like uh, mm-hmm. Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3. Well, Damn, it was like, just as painful. I it thought, really we've got was. Like, we've got like 20 more Spider-Mans that are coming out okay. that are going to yeah. want yeah. redeeming that. So. Thank yeah, you. Because I want to see Spider-Man in high school again. I, th- I think that the whole elusive idea of a Jedi in general at this point is, is just kind of confusing. Like, Space priest? Well, no, not that. But I mean, that obviously our new... Female, female lead for a Jedi is, is kind of just become a Jedi off mm-hmm. of, you know, interacting with people who are Force-sensitive at this point. Yeah. Oh, you're going to open the door for me. Like, okay, sure. <laughs> this is not? not the sequel you were looking for. But, I mean, all critiques aside, it, it is Disney, so it's whimsical. And yeah. it's kind of what they were going And I feel like they kind of... I don't, I don't know how much of a, a play in Rogue One that they had, but it did. I did enjoy it, and I feel like from everyone here, they, they enjoyed yeah, it. It's a little bit darker, yeah, and we kind of knew where it was going to lead. Yeah, but. it was a war story. I, I dug that about the yeah. concept of it mm-hmm. so much. Like, even if it wasn't a Star Wars universe, a standalone film in just a science fiction universe, it, it would have applied. Yes. And then when Darth Vader dropped the hammer, oh, man, you, you'll see it. You'll see be happy. I just yes. I'm not gonna critique that point at all, and I just I feel like I should go back and watch that scene in general because you the should. whole time I was watching it, I'm just like, how? Why doesn't he like? These people just need to pass the chip through the door. I'm just like, why are you guys taking so much time with this? It's ridiculous. Because then the movie would have been 30 minutes, and who's gonna pay for that? I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, it was nice to see Darth Vader, but I'm just sitting there the whole time like, <laughs> just do you're your job. You're taking a lot of Wait, liberty but, here. But is it is was it just me? Or did Darth Vader sound just a little overtaxed in his voice? Just, you know, wasn't quite there the oomph that. Uh, well, it was I mean, a long I, day. as far as I know, it was yes, still it was a very long day. It was still James Earl Jones. So oh, of as course. Far it was. As, yeah. as far as obviously we've seen how, how other <laughs> Star Wars fans are faring, or Star Wars uh, cast yeah. are faring, who's to say that he's doing too much better at this point? He is older, yeah. I believe, than. Well, he's in his 70s yeah, for sure, so. yeah. So, yeah, you, know, you got that going for you, but. Uh, also a giant snake. Mm. Oh, that's right. Little known fact. The double head snake. We see each other like this. James Earl Jones is a giant snake. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So for Hot Topic of the Week in the comic book publishing world, the multiverse that it is, uh, we we have some news. Uh, Tim Drake got murked. So. I mean that's it's been a yeah it's a been while. a little bit yeah. but we haven't mentioned it we haven't mentioned it and it's kind of funny because you know Robins wear red shirts and immediately my brain went to Star Trek and just like every good red shirt in Star Trek and it seems like with Robins he won't be back well until he goes into the Lazarus pit yeah yeah <laughs> it's a little bit crazy yeah it's kind of like you always have that one safety now so know. so it's been a, it's been a couple now we've got <laughs> the red hood uh-huh. who was uh jason todd mm-hmm. um we have damian wayne who's back yes yes uh, also died um who else is <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure dick grayson's died at some point <laughs> um, oh he did die he died yeah. and then he came back as grayson yeah and, and we did a, we did a run with that until uh the new 52 ended so I'm pretty sure at this point everybody's died 
Batman's died. Yeah. All of his Robins died. Yeah. There's one new Robin. Uh huh. He's uh-huh. not saying much because the track record is not looking good. No. no. Uh, so. <laughs> is it like Whack a Robin? Well, they keep popping up. You have to kill them well, all. Well, Tim Drake. Tim Drake was always kind of his. He was part of his own thing at, mm-hmm. n- now. So I mean, he was like a, he was the Red Robin. So. Mm-hmm. Now it's it's gonna see. I mean, he can come back and he can just go back into it. I'm yeah, much sure. like I'm sure uh, Damien did. I I just don't know at this point. I'm I'm all over the place. It's confusing. Uh, who who is Robin? Why are there so many of them? Uh, you think they pick a, bi- a different bird? You know, I mean, Robins just don't have that great of luck. Well, I mean, and, and there have been some of them that have actually been Batman. Uh, mm-hmm. They yes, fought yes. over that role. Oh yeah, so okay. I mean, it's for the cow or battle for the cow. Yeah, battle, yeah. battle for the yeah, cow. Cool, yes, actually. Yep, it definitely leaves a hole in there. And then, uh, I mean, obviously, we know Bruce Wayne just kind of after the New Fifty Two kind of re-roll back into this. But that's that also kind of brings up another mm-hmm. topic that we that we've kind of touched on lightly here. Um, at the new at the end of the New Fifty Two, um, for any of those of you who are kind of familiar with it, they kind of started to introduce the Watchmen. Oh, yes. Yeah, the uh, what's it called the uh, Doctor Manhattan's comedians of the button Batman found yep. some evidence, mm-hmm. and yes. then there's reference Doctor Manhattan. Yes, that's an interesting concept in and of itself because first of all, Doctor Manhattan is completely overpowered, right? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty much just an omnipotent being. Like, but but yeah. that also draws into the fact that he's really he's really the only one in that universe that's like that, as far as anyone else is concerned. In no. the actual the Watchmen universe, you everyone else is people. Everyone else is just people. Yeah, and we have people. Asmandius, who's who seems to be a little bit more of a, a tipsy in between kind of area. But I mean, obviously, we have a comedian mm-hmm. uh, who's dead Boston, or whatever he yeah. is now. Or um, so we'll see what they do with that. But it, it's something that I haven't really seen drawn in yet. And and I kind of I don't know if it's because we're at the point where we're at right now. What are they going to do, kind of thing? Yeah. Um, or you know, well, it'd be interesting to start if if they start if this is the the first of many kind of merging or mixing of vertical of vertigo DC characters and universes. Could be a cool concept. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see the Martian Manhunter and Doctor Manhattan have a discussion though. Oh that'd be They're cool. both so just like a mole and blank of person, I imagine yeah. it would just go nowhere. Well, I mean, either way, uh, it's going to be interesting. A, a little bit more to draw into people mm. who have been dying. I, it's not necessarily that he's dead as of right now, mm. for all of you out there, but I think the, the end of the Iron Man era for the moment is is in full effect. Mm. Um, obviously, we know that if anyone who's been mm. keeping up with Civil War at all, uh, Tony Civil Stark thing. is kind of in a coma, mm. but from what it kind of sounds like, is Beast and everybody was kind of aware or at some point became aware that he moderately put himself in that. Yeah, he messed um, with his own body for so long. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He'd been yeah. doing experimentation on himself. So uh, we'll see if he kind of comes out of it and turns into a beautiful iron butterfly or if Ooh. he kind of... In Gata De Vida. Yeah. Iron butterfly. But that does open up... Uh, apparently he's split into two different people, the, the whole iron concept. Um, mm. We have infamous Iron Man now who is played by Doctor Doom, which is kind of a, a redemption story, I guess, at the mm. moment. We'll see what he kind of is. If you read the first couple of issues, he kind of uh, is coming to terms with the fact that he wants to be a good person, but also not really sure if he wants to be a good person kind of thing. Or mm. everyone else doesn't really believe that he's a good person. Yeah. And then obviously we have Iron Heart, um, which is an interesting take on kind of Tony Stark still being alive because the AI for... Riri's suit at this moment in time is actually Tony Stark's brain downloaded. So we'll see where it goes with that. It's said that I kind of want Iron Man to stay dead because I want to stay with the era of uh, what's it called? Johnny Depp's? Not Johnny Depp. Oh my God. <gasps> I'm sorry. How I'm dare you? Robert Downey Jr.? Robert Downey Jr.'s era of that. We're sorry, you know, Robert like, Downey Jr. That would be, uh, honestly, I want that to be the end of the era. I want it to be like that arrogance <laughs> perfection. So I'm sorry. Like, if you go back a little bit further, because he's obviously influenced the comic books, if you go back a little bit further, He's a know-it-all, and he's kind of like Mr. Fantastic, kind of distant, yeah. but just super arrogant. Now he actually has a sense of humor. I'm sorry, I've liked what's happened since his influence to the character. Well, I mean, it, yeah. if you, I don't know if you guys want to have it, setting a chance down to see it, mm-hmm. but there's a really heartfelt scene between uh, Captain Marvel and him, or Miss M- Marvel, or whatever mm-hmm. they all are now, yeah. Yeah. Um, where you know they, they basically come to terms that a couple issues beforehand that they know what path they they've chose mm-hmm. they argue um, the morality of the yeah and and it definitely it, it definitely re- tugs on the heartstrings to say the least with with those two characters 
Um, and then this is probably going to wind up rolling out the whole Inhumans and versus X-Men because um, the Inhuman that we saw that was telling the future with some of these characters, there's a lot um, in place. And obviously with telling the future, you can't determine whether or not all of it's true or all of it's going to happen. But there's a scene obviously between X-Men and humans that we all knew was bound to happen at this point. And from what we've seen in the comic books coming out here, it's going down that path. So we'll see if everything that he mm -hmm. foresaw was, was going to come to term or if it's just kind of like, you know, every other person that's ever told the future is going to be with could be, could not be. Well, with the multiverses being the multiverses, they could just take it off on that tangent and say that it's it, it's happening, that it got skewed into this particular universe and that's the path that's going to go for that universe or change no, it up no, and I go hope, I hope not. this one and change it up like that. There was a cool interaction with that with him with the old man Logan. Remember Civil War when the telepath, where the guy still sees the future? Met yeah. Met Logan. Oh, that concept that, like, at the end of the whole Marvel Universe, Logan's waiting there. For some reason, I just find that co concept come. Uh, it's, not too, it's not too surprising. <laughs> I mean, who, no one's going to kill that, that badass of a character. I think Wolverine is more badass as old, old man Logan than he has ever been, to be honest, because that character oh. is just so good. Yeah. So good. And he's yeah. been through so much combat. It's just, uh, yeah. Even though his healing build is a little bit slower, I just loved old man Logan, just in general. Definitely spectacular. I need to find a figure even now I think about it. But I mean, well, it, what better place to get that figurine than here at Yesteryear Comics? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Come on, Five honestly. Stars. You can go purchase it right now if you like. It's, it's actually, We're just kidding. We're doing a show. <laughs> and actually, speaking of which, a mm -hmm. uh, show, we got to continue with our other segment, The Gamer's Realm. Take it away, Jeremy. What you got for us? I'm Jeremy Gibbs, and thanks for the introduction, guys. Sorry I couldn't be there tonight. Um, but let's get straight into the news. First off, we have Nintendo Switch, which is a great new console coming out that's going to be releasing in March 2017. It's going to have a bunch of games such as Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Project Sonic, Minecraft, and Skyrim, and a bunch of other games such as many Mario games that are going to accompany it, which is kind of expected, as well as rumored, I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but Pokemon will have a, ga a game coming out for the Nintendo Switch that is supposed to go hand in hand with Sun and Moon. So, that's gonna be awesome. Next up, we have a new commercial coming out from Japan, from the PlayStation, um, PlayStation channel, about a Japanese gravity-defying kitten. I'm not kidding you, it's about two girls, two sisters, that are spending so much time in a room trying to grab a cat that is defying gravity. All for Gravity Rush 2. That's actually a really good commercial. I say go check it out. Really funny. And it made me laugh a lot. So. Next up we have League of Legends, which is actually coming out with... It came out with 7.1 patch notes. Let's just say that. And it's kind of kind of good, kind of bad. First off, there's a lot of changes to items, champions, um, not so much gameplay, so we don't have to worry about that, but let's go into the champions. Champions that were changed were Camille, Karma, Cannon, Draven, Nivea, and a bunch of other ADCs and mages. One thing nerfed Camille hard. Her old, her, not just her old, no, no, it's not her, yeah. Her old passive, as well as her E and Q, have been changed. Her health has been nerfed, as well as with, she's just not viable as much. She, I don't see her being played, so I don't know what that says about Camille as a champion. I still think she's a lot of fun. She's really, she's actually kind of difficult, not going to lie, with her passive about her shields. So, I say still play her, even with the nerf, probably going to be a lot more fun playing her, actually. Another part of the news, Anivia, her old has been buffed where it actually explodes after finishing charging. So that's pretty cool. Does a buttload of uh, magic damage. And let's also talk about Draven. Who doesn't love the League of Draven? Draven's Q now scales off of bonus damage instead of total damage. So kind of a nerf, kind of a not nerf. Uh, a couple other things changed for Kennen and Karma, but I don't really pay attention to the champions because I don't really care for them. And they're cancerous anyways. So either way, they're going to be cancerous. What can I say? But I'm going to try to scale out of Bronze 5 this coming week, as well as get some new games off of Steam. So I'm going to hightail it out of here. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe on to my channel, Rexar98. 
So, sorry, Dad, but free shout out. Um, anyways, thanks for guys for tuning in to Gamers Realm. I'm Jeremy Gibbs for Comics Comes Beyond, and back to you guys in the comic book shop. Bye. Well, that was awesome. As usual, you can see Jeremy on his own channel, but here as well at Comics Cons and Beyond with the Gamers Realm. Thank you, Jeremy, for such an awesome report. How should we wrap up uh, this episode? Have you seen the pictures of the new Suicide Squad? Oh, no, I have not. Yeah, so a character that I thought was going to be a bit role, like nothing in particular, one of the leaders of it is going to be the Joker's alleged daughter. When he wears his face. Oh, God. Well, oh, that Joker's oh. daughter, is, for the record, is not really his daughter. No, she just wears part of him. That's, that's, isn't that how it works? Well, well yeah. just like in... I'll remember that the next time I'm doing a family blood test. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, just, just let me wear your face. Just let me wear your face, just a little bit. Well, if... if I need a job interview. If Joker can <laughs> borrow one of the Robins and turn him into JJ because Batman has so many kids, you know, lying around, yeah. why not some girl that just has a fetish with the Joker and wears his face? Why not? Yeah, because she's been involved with, uh, obviously she, she's had her run, mm -hmm. and then uh, she was in The Red Hood, The Outlaws, and stuff like that for I a really while. I really want to read The Outlaws, actually. I haven't got to I yet. love it. It's, yeah. I'm a Red Hood fan through and through, so. Can't. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He is. But I think it's, it's, it's a pretty good way to, to, mm -hmm. to round it up, obviously. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of things, and obviously, to, to mention back to Carrie Fisher, I mean, yes. hopefully this this year turns out to be a little bit better. I think a lot of us kind of feel with all the people passing away this last year that it, it was a little bit of a... 2016 was a bizarre year was for... Definitely bizarre yeah, year. man. But we'll see. I mean, obviously, there's some things to be said about people who are famous living in the fast lane, so... Oh, yeah. But Carrie Fisher, yeah. You know, again, every fan person, fan boy, fan girl, you know, she made an indelible mark on everybody's lives. Uh, as Princess Leia, and just as a actress extraordinaire, and yeah, you will be missed. Absolutely, that was awesome. Like some of her interviews, I just dug them. She got so vulgar and like rude towards the end. I loved it. <laughs> I loved her just speaking her mind at all times. I'm sorry, made me happy. Oh, in one movie, mm -hmm. you, you got to see her in. That's actually really funny, and and this pays tribute to her her little darker, quirkier side. Blues Brothers, the original <laughs> Blues Brothers, oh, as John Belushi's uh, girlfriend, jilted girlfriend that he left at the altar. You gotta see it. It's funny. It does Carrie Fisher justice. It truly does. <laughs> well, for Comics, Cons, and Beyond, I'm Lawrence. Adam. And I'm Bob. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave comments, and most importantly, always tell a friend. We'll see ya.